What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today we're gonna to be doing a cocktail that is near and dear to my heart. It's called a Pignoli Alexander, but to find out why, you're gonna to have to tune in to the end. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is a half ounce of dry curacao. Uh, you could absolutely use Cointreau in this recipe if you wanted, and you can absolutely use uh, Grand Marnier for a sub of cur curacao. And then we're gonna do half an ounce of creme de cacao. I'm using the dark variety. You can also use the light variety if you like. Two ounces of Sailor Jerry spiced rum. Yes, you can use other spiced rums. There you go. I gave you subs for every single ingredient that we used here. It's a pretty simple cocktail though, and it'll go good with uh, a variety of different spiced rums, as well as different orange liqueurs and also creme de cocos. Like Captain Morgan? Cacao, sorry. Yeah, if they want to use Captain Morgan, go ahead and use Captain Morgan. It will work with it, absolutely. Add in our ice here and give it a nice stir. That fly that's flying around our set is driving me absolutely crazy. And by set, I mean kitchen. It's driving me crazy. I, I've seen it go this way and then this way and then this way and then this way the whole time that we've been shooting. I don't know if it's noticeable on camera, but it's really annoying me. Yeah, I, I see it. They're weird. They're always flying like, I think like 90 degree turns. Right, totally. And then they're all, because we have this big bar of light right here, they're like attracted to the light. I think that's enough stirring for this cocktail. All right, and then we're just gonna strain it into our coop. And before Maria says, oh, Another brown cocktail. This is uh, called a Pignole Alexander, which takes its inspiration from the Alexander cocktail. So we're gonna be uh, layering some cream on top, but you know what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add just like a little, I'm just gonna eye it out, but just gonna add a little of the curacao, maybe a quarter of an ounce or half an ounce of curacao into the cream to kind of give it a nice kind of orangey feel to it. I'm gonna work that flavor profile in there. And then we're using the coil trick so we'll put a coil inside a squeeze bottle to expand the cream pretty fast. And the coil is from the Hawthorne strainer. The coil what? It's from the Hawthorne strainer. The coil is from a Hawthorne strainer. Actually, the Hawthorne strainer that I used is right here. You can take the coil off a Hawthorne strainer and then put it right back on. So there's that little hack. Now, you gotta be careful about expanding the cream. I am not I notoriously over, over expand the cream when I do it this way, but it is a very fast way to do it. So when I used to do this in the bar, uh, I didn't have to sit there and expand cream for a hundred years, which is a pain in the butt. Um, if it sits like a bead on your finger, then you'll know that it will layer on top of the cocktail. And then we're just going to layer it on top of our cocktail, like so. Well, even this actually is a little bit not layering as liquidy as I would like. If it does that, you can actually tap the bottom and it'll help the cream settle. Or if you are an enterprising person and a daredevil, you can kind of tap it like that. Uh, then we're gonna take some dark chocolate and we're just going to grate it over the top like so. And there it is, the Pignol Alexander. Let's take a little. Oh man, that brings back so many memories. It's really nice because you get the creme de cacao is a really, prominent flavor profile, but you still do feel that spiced rum and a little bit of the heat of the proof of that. And then that orange kind of plays in as well. It's nice to play the orange into the cream because it gives you like a nice kind of, it just reminds me of this very particular thing. So the inspiration behind this cocktail, I have to take you back through the years, down memory lane. Let's do it. Boom. So when I was a kid, uh, my dad used to take me to the north end of Boston, which is the Italian section of Boston. And uh, he would go watch AC Milan matches. So my father is from Como, Italy. Como, Italy is a small town. I believe it's north of Milan. They have a big lake there, I heard. They do have a big lake there. And uh, George Clooney has a house on, on that lake as well. And there are towns all around the lake. So the last time I visited there was probably 2009 or 2010. Uh, and we took the, you can take the fast ferry or the slow ferry. And the slow ferry takes three and a half hours to go to all these little stops. And you can get off at any one of these little stops and go to all these little towns. These, we, we ate in a 15th century wine cellar that uh, was a family owned affair where 
you know, the father was making the wine and the brother was curing the meats and the meats were all curing above your head. And they'd make you these fantastic plates of charcuterie. It was, it was, it was, it was it's a, it's a brilliant and magical place and everyone should go visit it there at some point in their lives. Um, so my father is from there and uh, they don't have a football team, but the closest town is AC Milan, the closest like big city. Sorry, I said the closest big city is AC Milan, but what I meant to say was the closest big city is Milan. And so his team was AC Milan. And so he would take me to the Italian section of Boston and uh, go watch AC Milan matches. And we would go to these really typical Italian bakeries and he would just kind of stuff me full of sweets, uh, cannolis, and then also these like chocolate orange cookies that I loved so much. My father passed away in 2008 and this cocktail just kind of brings me back to that time. It brings me back to that, those kind of that wonderful moment uh, sitting with my dad watching uh, a game that I didn't understand, but just so happy to be eating you know, sweets. Sometimes my uncles would be there. Sometimes my cousins would be there. Sometimes we'd just be alone. And it was just this ritual that we had when we were little. Um, and it's just amazing to me, you know, how food can really bring back like just very vivid times in your life. You know, I think it's pretty incredible. I later found out actually that the Pignoli cookie is not actually that chocolate orange cookie. And I was wrong about the name, but even though I was wrong about the name, I decided that uh, the name of the cocktail should persist. So there it is, the Pignoli Alexander. If you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon. We've got some cool things going on there and YouTube memberships. We've got some cool emojis and different, uh, different, I don't know, exclusive videos and things that we do as well and uh, stuff ahead of time. So you should check that out. We go, uh, we got a Teespring for some uh, nice t-shirts if you want to support our merch and if you want to support our uh, virtual bottle program, go to theeducatedbarfly.com. And uh, I don't know, I just like totally, I was just like, go to theeducatedbarfly, what is it again? Oh yeah, it's .com. Yeah, go to theeducatedbarfly.com. For some reason, my brain just like totally blanked right there. Uh, luckily, it didn't blank in the middle of my, my kind of story, my like, tearjerker kind of story. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys another time.